G'day, my name's Karen Retra and we're in my East Aubrey garden. My love of insects began when my partner bought me a hive of honeybees as a birthday present. I went out in the garden and I was watching the honeybees and learning lots about them, but I also realised there were many other insects doing all sorts of things and I wanted to learn more about them. Now, it's pretty cool that at the moment technology means you can take photos and share with people what you've seen, so I was able to learn that way. But also, I found out that for many insects, we don't necessarily know heaps about them. So this was an opportunity to add a little bit to our collective knowledge. For me, insects bring curiosity and wonder in my garden. There's so much going on if you just slow down and take a look. My favourites are the pollinator insects. And when we think of pollinators, often we might think of European honeybees, but that's just one species. So I think it's amazing that there are more than 1,600 species of native Australian bee. I've been able to put names to 45 species in my garden alone. I love to watch the flies and the wasps. I know this sounds funny. I know not many people like flies and wasps and yet they're playing important roles and they're actually really fascinating. The pollinator insects are important to my food garden. My fruit trees, my tomatoes, eggplants, cucumbers, pumpkin, all benefit from the insects visiting and helping to ensure that I get great fruit set and that I get good seeds that I can then plant in my garden. But the same is true in the wider landscape. So without insects, those plants find it hard to reproduce. So we want insects in order to have more plants. It's, it's a really amazing interaction and relationship. So initially I was particularly chasing native bees. The native bees led me to flies and wasps. And now I'm really quite blown away by the complete diversity of insects. So it's been fun to spend time and see what's going on and try and work out the stories, the life histories of what's happening in my garden. It might sound a bit funny, I'm particularly fond of mantises. Now, they do eat some of my favourite insects, but I just think they look so interesting and the way that they move, I kind of can't help but like them. I've met some really curious creatures that I had no idea about. Once a year, the feather-horned beetles, Ripacera, turn up and they've got these really fancy antennae just for a couple of weeks. Got to be in the right place at the right time. I've also met ant lions, which look a little bit, as an adult, like a cross between a butterfly and a dragonfly. All of this is happening all around us, but it's fun to spend some time to get to know these different characters. I know lots of people like the butterflies. You can go out at night and observe the moths. You know, there's just loads and loads and loads of really fabulous insects if you take the time to look. A bit like attracting any other type of wildlife to your garden, you want to be providing for these insects. Now, they're diverse and their needs are diverse, but a lot of the broad categories that you might apply to birds or mammals are the same. So they're looking for food, they're looking for somewhere they can shelter from predators or from bad weather. They're looking for places they can nest. Um, they are also potentially needing some water or access to hydration. And of course, they'd prefer that humans aren't whopping them out with some type of practice that doesn't suit them. So when it comes to food, particularly with say the pollinator insects, Often that's going to be nectar and pollen in flowers. So having a diverse range of flowers, flowering throughout the seasons that different insects are active, providing nectar, which is energy, and pollen, which is protein, and native bees actually use to feed their young, is important. And so in my garden, I try to have that diversity, different shaped flowers, different coloured flowers, different heights of flowers, and throughout the season. I'm also arguably maybe a bit of a messy gardener, but I like to squeeze lots of things in so that there is a bit of everything for everyone. I think it's interesting that the plants, Australian native plants and Australian native insects co-evolved so that 
the plants are often trying to attract a particular group or type of insect. And the way that they do that might be through the scent of the flower, the colour of the flower, the shape of the flower, which is attractive to particular insects. Often on red flowers, you'll see butterflies or birds. Often on the blue plants, you'll see more of the native bees and flies. The kind of stinky flowers often have more flies and the really sweet smelling flowers often have more bees. So in my garden, I'm trying to squeeze in as many of these different elements as I can. And increasingly, I watch to see what's happening both in my garden and elsewhere and see if I can bring in more of the plants that are going to attract the insects that I'm particularly fond of. I'm also less likely to be trimming some of the stems because I know that those old pithy stems are places that bees and other insects like to nest. By leaving dead wood rather than cleaning it up, it's an opportunity for some borer insects to maybe make holes, and those holes then get repurposed by other beetles, by native bees, by wasps for their purposes. I love to watch all that process go through rather than immediately clean everything up and miss out. For me, insects are a crucial part of any habitat garden. Even if you prefer the feathered birds or the furry mammals or even the reptiles, you actually want insects in your garden because they will help to attract the other wildlife. I hope though that as you start to stop and watch for insects, that you too will get the bug and be keen to learn more about them and share your experiences with your insect wildlife garden. Mm -hmm.